Hey gang, Mark LeBlanc here from the Yellow Cat Workshop. Uh, this is the second video in a series on how I am upgrading my workbench. If you recall in the first video, I decided to keep the legs from my old workbench but put together a brand new top. This morning I completed the installation of a vise uh, on, uh, on, the, uh, on the workbench. Uh, my intent originally was to do a video about that. But I have to admit that I learned a lot of lessons while this install was being done. So instead of making you suffer through all the pain and agony that I went through, what I would like to do is take all those lessons learned and focus on the installation of, a new, of another vise that's going to go on the end of the workbench. Well, this vise comes from Czechoslovakia. Uh, I bought it at Lee Valley. And uh, one of its features is it's got a quick release mechanism, so you can pull it and arrange it as soon as you start to turn around a little bit, then it engages, and then you can get the finer adjustments. Um, this is a very powerful vise. I mean, it's, it's got a lot of pressure on it. Both of the rear and front jaws are made out of maple. In this case, they're 20 inches long and about two inches thick. So very big, beefy pieces of stock. I've tried this morning to um, uh, put into this vise just a, a piece of three quarter inch pine, use my planes on it, works beautifully. This is gonna be a great addition to the shop. So let's take all those lessons, right? And let's apply it to the other vise. Follow me around. So the manufacturer recommends that you install this vise with the bench being upside down. So right now you see, here's the underside of the, uh, of the first vise and this is how it's installed. Now the vise, here are the components that come in the box. There's a set of instructions and there's the vise itself. You take it apart, that's the next thing that they recommend. You take out this retaining pin which is right on the middle axle. Uh, and that releases this plate and then you can basically take this whole uh, part uh, apart or the, the whole vise apart. So the, um, the base plate itself, which is this thing, is a little bit off center. The, the center point, as I found out, is this back screw here. Uh, the one that is, if you look here, there's one axis that is further away from the main body and one that is closest. So you take the screw that is closest to the one that's farthest away from the Hopefully you guys make sense out of this. Um, and that's the center point. So what I've done uh, to start the assembly is I have taken a couple of calls and I've clamped them to the bottom of, or which in turn is the top of the workbench. Uh, and I've done that on both sides and then I put what will become the rear jaw lined it up flush with the sides and then clamp that down so that it's in good position. Now prior to that I drew a middle line to the whole bench. So let me take the, the main plate here. All right, I'm going to line this up right on that screw. Hopefully you guys can see it a little bit more right. There we go. And what I'm going what I've contracted is a little dowel here with one is a 20 millimeter Forstner bit on one end and on the other end there is a nail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push these into the two side holes or the two side axis are 20 millimeters in size so I'm going to push that in and tap the uh, brad into what will become the rear jaw so that I've got a good reference point for the center point and I'll do the same thing with this dowel and this nail for the middle part. So that's the next thing to do and after that it's off to the drill press 
to drill the holes that will uh, host the um, uh, anyways the holes that are necessary for for the vice to operate all right so let's let's tap the reference points let's do that first so before proceeding I've decided two things one is I'm not going to line up the center line with the screw I'm going to line up the center line with the center of the spindle that's one second thing is I'm going to secure the base plate right away to the uh, bench so that I can take my measurements without the plate moving uh, at all. So let's go ahead and do that. Make sure the base plate is flush with the front. All right, good. All right, let's take the rear jaw again. All right, let's start with the 20 millimeter holes. Right, let's get rid of this. So my marks are clear, they are on the face of the rear jaw. I'm good to go to the drill press and start drilling some holes. But before I do that, what I've done is I've taken my square and I've aligned, I've transferred those lines onto the edge here so that I could take measurements with Protractor and to confirm. So for example, they say that the distance between the this point and that point, the center point should be 61 millimeters. Turns out I'm just under that, I mean it's really close. The distance between the center line and the end line should be 109 millimeters, I'm bang on. So, having said that, I'm comfortable that my marks are transferred at the right spot and that I can go ahead and drill my holes. Let's go to the drill press now. All right, so I'm set up on my drill press. The stock is secure with a couple of clamps. I've aligned my Forstner bit. This is a 20 millimeter uh, Forstner bit. I'm gonna take it very slow uh, in terms of rotation of the bit itself, and then just go ahead and drill. I did put a quarter inch plywood backing so that I don't get exploding wood. Shouldn't be too bad. Let's get going. That's just beautiful. So the two holes for the guide rods are 20 millimeters. The hole for the gear is 30. So I changed the bit to a 30 millimeter to a 30 millimeter bit. And same process. The stock is clamped, slow speed. Go ahead and, and bore out that hole. Alright, so that takes care of boring the holes for the rear jaw. What about the front jaw? Well, here it is. This is the piece that's going to be the front jaw. That's the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both my pieces, clamp them together, and make sure that they're flush with each other. there. Alright, so everything looks nice and flush. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. 
that I did before, except this time I'm going to use my 35, my 30 millimeter uh, bit. There we go. And then my 20 millimeter bit. Back to the drill press. So I mentioned earlier that I had learned a lot while installing the first vise. Here's lesson number one. A 20 millimeter Forstner bit is not always 20 millimeter. I actually bought three different bits. One I returned, but I bought three bits in total. All three of them are not 20 millimeter. They're slightly under 20 millimeter. Which means that when I try to fit the guide rods into the holes, it's very snug, way too snug. And so I had a lot of problems figuring out how to get the vise properly installed and working because of the snugness. Second lesson is that whenever you're using the types of measurements, and, and frankly the way that I, that I measured the, the position of the holes worked, it really did. But as soon as you do that, as soon as you go to the drill press, start drilling holes, there's going to be some imperfections, there's going to be some error introduced. So it's not always going to be perfectly aligned or perfectly in the right spot. It's just not going to happen. So what I ended up doing, the, now by the way, the guide hole, the one that's 30 millimeters, it's fine. No problems there. But the 20 millimeter holes, they are just a little too snug. So what I I'm going to do is I'm going to use my oscillating spindle sander and I'm going to sand away the opening of the four holes that are 20 millimeters and just slightly expand them so that it's not so snug and every time that I do that I will test it out with the guide rods so that I've got something that actually can fit and slide properly and easily. I learned the hard way. 20 millimeter Forstner bit is not always 20 millimeters. All right, I'm happy with this. This is good. This is going to work. Time to secure the rear jaw and then the front jaw and then I can flip the bench around and yeah, we'll be done. Cool. Alright, I've temporarily mounted the rear jaw to the, um, into the vice system using the, the actual gears and all that. Um, what I want to do at this point is I want to figure out where the middle point of the bench is because that's where I'm going to be screwing in some retaining screws. All right, so that's the point there. Let me make the mark on the other side as well. All right, and then I'll just use my square and transfer that line over onto the face, and I will drill. Let's see, probably seven or so screws so that I can secure this properly into the side of the bench. Now I realize I'm going to be drilling into end grain, which is not ideal. That's why I'm putting so many screws, um, just so that it holds a little bit better. Pretty easy stuff. So far this is going a lot better than vice number one. Alright, so I temporarily, temporarily repositioned the rear jaw, having mounted the uh, actual assembly into the base plate, so everything is properly aligned. I've got seven holes, seven holes for drill bits, I've got three inch number eight Robertson drill bits, or sorry, screws. 
time to secure the rear jaw. All right, so I took out the assembly, installed the front jaw. I keep calling it a faceplate, but it's really the front jaw. And then reassembled everything in place, and it's moving very nicely. So that's not going to be an issue. There are three holes that are there for either screws. I'm going to put lag screws in my case. So first thing I'm going to do is pre-drill with that. Of course, you should always secure your drill bit. All right, let's pre-drill some holes. So off camera, I cleaned up the uh, workbench. I also secured the face of the vise to the face jaw. So it's all good. One thing I need to do before flipping this over is to reattach this back plate and secure it with the uh, retaining pin. And that's gonna prevent That's going to prevent this from actually jumping out or going too far back. All right, I need to need something to push that in. There we go. All right. Time to do a little bit of exercise. I'm almost afraid to do this. This is going to be heavy. Oof. This is going to be very heavy. Final, final step, I bought these handles, come with two caps, and screws, I'm just going to screw one side in, alright, there's that, push it through, install the second side, This works. Works beautifully. That's great. So, please follow these steps the way that I did it for the second vise. This is really an easy way to install it. It worked. Hopefully, this was helpful for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.